My Latin culture runs deep with strength. My father taught me how to walk with swag and own a room. He was the very definition of determination. In fact, when he walked into a space, you knew Big Red was here. He actually also taught me how to overcome any sort of challenge. When I was just four years old, he had a traumatic brain injury and had to learn to walk, talk, read, and write all over again. He overcame a challenge that would have defeated many. And my mother, she taught me that women can do it all. She is what I call the definition of resilience, taking care of her husband who was partially paralyzed, two fiery little girls, and also becoming the breadwinner of our family. I also grew up in Marlboro Projects in Brooklyn, New York. And yes, growing up in the projects had its challenges. My apartment was robbed. I was held at gunpoint. I was caught up in multiple shootouts. But I always like to think about the positive aspects of my community because there are so many. It was a community that was built on the very framework of strength, people doing what they needed to survive. And for me, all of my wins were always championed. For me, I can remember coming home from school with my latest A grades and telling all the fellas on the stoops, the high fives were fierce. Every single thing that I did was supported. I can remember it all. My background, my family, my identity created within me this force. But that all changed the second I stepped in the workplace. It seemed like within minutes I was labeled. People called me ghetto, too much, too loud. I can even remember the boss who told me in front of everyone that my use of hand gestures when I speak made me look unintelligent. It seemed like within seconds, I started to cower into myself because it wasn't my abilities that were in question. It was my identity, my background, my culture, all of those positive things that I experienced seemed to be what was up on trial and open for anybody to judge. And this is the dilemma that women of color face that make them feel like they have to conform in the workplace. You leave the safety and security of your space, your community, and you step into another one that's built with different norms and people and rules. An environment in which there are these invisible barriers and, and a, they're built on the very framework of inequality where you are told to sit down Take your seat, don't speak up. And too often we do thinking that that's the way that we're going to be able to be successful. As a first generation college student, first generation graduate student and first in my family to hold high level leadership roles, I didn't have the role model to help me to reconcile these contradictory experiences. The feeling of strength in one aspect of my life but the inability to find my stride in another. I fell in love with chemistry, with science when I was in high school and I thought I was gonna be a researcher, save the world. But I didn't realize that following that passion was going to lead me into a white male dominated environment in which I and other women of color would experience bias, microaggression, discrimination on the regular. An environment in which you are not encouraged to assimilate. It is expected in order for you to make it. I always wanted to be successful at every single thing that I did, especially when it came to my career. And so when I walked into that environment, I looked around for the clues for how to fit in, how to be successful, who's getting the pay raises, who's getting the promotions, who's moving up the ladder. But the problem was I couldn't see myself in any of those people. So I was caught in this conundrum, this point at which in order to obtain what I wanted, it seemed like I had to adopt this standard of success, this one size fits all standard of success. But that standard wasn't built with me in mind, with people that look like me in mind. And so I was caught in this constant push pull the push to conform and the pull to be who I wanted to be, who I was. 
And this constant struggle made me doubt myself so much. Doubt myself to the point that I had these voices in my head telling me that I wasn't enough. I shouldn't speak up. I shouldn't say anything. I wasn't intelligent enough as the person next to me. I doubted myself so much and questioned every word that I couldn't even speak. I remember sitting in meetings and telling myself to talk, say my idea, express myself, and I just couldn't. And then I would leave those meetings and want to kick myself because I didn't have my chance. I didn't take my chance. I shrunk myself so much to make space for everybody else, but never for myself. And that struggle hit me so hard emotionally and mentally that I started to have panic attacks. The daily work commute became filled with dread. Conflict within myself became the very backbone of my existence. To the point that this trying to assimilate that I was doing, it became just exhausting. Exhausting and demoralizing and I simply couldn't do it anymore. You're probably wondering what changed, what stopped me from doing this conforming. Well, was realizing that the problem wasn't actually me. The problem was that I was trying to fit myself into a space that wasn't built for me or people who look like me. The problem was the workplace culture itself. And if I was gonna have a hand in changing any of that culture, then I had to go back to my roots. Through deep reflective work, journaling, coaching, and even therapy, I started to bring that strong, courageous woman from the street into the boardroom with the knowledge that I for sure was going to be a part of the change. And if, and if I was going to do that, then I was going to be myself in every single facet of my life and in every single environment. What this also meant was that I was going to go back to that fiery little girl, the one whose parents defined the word strength and taught her how to emulate it. The one whose little sister inspired in her this deep amount of hope and love because she herself overcame her struggles with lupus. The one who grew up in Marlboro Project, my community, because in my community, you stand up against the struggles that the external world puts on you. And I'd be damned if I was gonna let them down. Data shows that over 80% of women of color feel they cannot be themselves in the workplace. It's like when they walk into that environment, they shed themselves of their very unique self. They feel the need to steer away from the identity, the culture, the accomplishments, everything that brought them to where they are in this moment. They feel the need to conform. I know it because I did it. Why? Because when you enter into that space, you are made to believe that the person that you are outside could not exist in that workplace. And as someone who conformed and who took myself out of it, I am here to tell you that that is simply not true. So what can we as women of color do to push past the need to conform in the workplace? We can start by reclaiming our voices, by speaking up for ourselves, speaking up for others, and speaking out against workplace discrimination, regardless of the consequences. Yes, when I started to speak up for myself and when I started to tell people about themselves, I got a lot of side eye. But that was because I was now walking into this space with the strength of my father, the resilience of my mother the confidence that came from my community, from my culture. And I also had this whole community behind me supporting me. And that was a lot for people to handle now. But my proclamation is it is not my job to make you comfortable. So here's the thing, to be fearless in the workplace means to simply be who you are to own your story, to own your identity, to own your background, all of your experiences, everything. Because that is the very soul of your power. And I am here to tell you that they will try to quash it, but know that the only person who can change you is you. 
So stand in your strength, stand in your power, and stand in your youth. Thank you so much.